Hey there, welcome to episode 118 of Wise Advice. Just checking in here, getting you ready, getting you squared away. We'll give you a second to get caught up. It's been a couple days since I've been here, so uh, we'll be interested to see how you guys are doing. Uh, Alicia, good evening to you. First one to check in, that's always fun. Uh, let's see, Denise, hello. How are you? Good evening to you. Elise from Wheaton. Paula's good here. Good evening to Paula. Very nice. Lee, ha ha ha, water time. It's almost water time. That's right. B Y O W. Bring your own water. Uh, Denise over on Instagram. Good evening to you. Uh, David's here. Woohoo. Lee, I got Lee Gloria's here. Linda, good evening from Indiana. Uh, Lee, good evening. Hello, Jeff, checking in. Good evening to you, sir. Diane's here. Angie's here. Uh, Denise is here. Liz Beth is on Instagram tonight. So you know Instagram, we only get an hour on Instagram together. So if you lose Instagram, get over to Facebook. We're live on Facebook and Instagram at the same time. So Tara, good evening to you. Chris, good evening. How are you, sir? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. Um, Suzanne, so am I. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Sandra, you're here checking in. Um, let's see. Tara's here. I got that. Karen. Hi from Karen. South Haven. Anne's ready for number 118. Very nice. Um, very nice. So Liz, Liz, Beth, Anne over on Instagram says so she's got her magnets today so very cool yeah so I'm glad you're sharing them that's very nice of you uh, Paula from Hershey Pennsylvania Ellen hello Johnstown Pennsylvania checking in Michelle's here Jamie's here Kaylin happy yeah that's right it you know it's funny when you just said happy Monday I was confused I was like Monday uh, I had I kinda of forgot it was Monday so that's the uh, the reason we haven't done a show in a couple days is obviously had a very busy weekend and you know at some point I think I, I got like four hours of sleep from Friday to Sunday so uh, wasn't wasn't really it was a busy weekend had a lot of fun and so I just said well I'll get to it tonight and so tonight's working out pretty good so so it's very very cool uh, LA is checking in Carrie's checking in. Uh, Chris, the roll call. Um, Terry, just finished your walk. Very cool. Yvette's here. Mom's checking in. Paula, Paulette's here. I got that. Um, I know a lot of you guys said that. Angie saying missed missed the show. You know, I missed it too. But I mean, I'll tell you, I enjoyed getting some sleep. Uh, that was new, nice. Uh, Chris got a new charm on Saturday. Which one was it, Chris? Did I miss it on Facebook? I think I know which one it is. And if I'm right, I'm going to put it in here. Um, gotcha. Um, Susan says hi. Paula, don't struggle. You know, it's not. This is not a journey to struggle with. Um, so let's let's go ahead and and. You know, as soon as you say you're so here's the, I said this today to somebody. You know, you can you can overeat, you can kind of be a little sloppy on the plan, but if you know that going into it, you know, accept it, own it, and know you can have the trust and confidence to get back to it. As soon as you call it a struggle, it kind of gives yourself permission to to not work as hard because you 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 kind of accept the struggle term. So don't call it a struggle. You know, call it what it is, is you're overeating, you're you're not following the plan properly, but it's not a struggle because you know how to work the plan. And again, as soon as you say you struggle, then you're like, oh, I'm defeated. So no, so you know what, I, I'm just not doing it right. And and don't call it a struggle. That's my two cent tip for tonight. Renee, checking in from Boston. Good evening, Winter Garden, Florida. Beth, how do you, is it Bethany? Is it, is it just, is it, um... Bethany, is it pronounced the same way? The A on the end, it throws me for a little bit of a loop. Is it silent? I'm just curious. 
uh, from Winter Garden, Florida, which I have no idea where that is, but I'm assuming if you're on Facebook Live, you're in one of the areas in Florida where you have power, so that's good news. Um, Brandy from Oklahoma, good evening. Christy, good evening to you. Glad you got them. Julia, Julie, sorry, Julie from Denver, Colorado. Brian, there you are. A lot of good, familiar, fun names. You know, I've been three days away, but we don't, we don't, we don't miss a beat. Um, Linda just made your family a delicious dinner, and no one knew that you were. It was a five-point Weight Watcher recipe. Awesome. That's called winning. Um, so Maureen is in Florida with no power, but safe, and so yeah, God is absolutely good. Uh, no doubt about that for sure. Megan's here. Good evening to you. Um, so Gloria shared your, so a lot of you guys are really cool. You're buying them, buying the magnets and sharing them. So I appreciate that. That's very, very fun. Becky's checking in from Lake, uh, Elsinore, California, I guess. Gail from Illinois. Yeah, I'm glad I'm back here too. Um, so Paul is here. Yeah. Megan Kelly's from Utah. Yep. Uh, Ellen from Boulder. Uh, let's see. Joanne's here. Let's see what's it. Um, yes. So I know Lee. Sleep is the key, but um, man, sometimes it's tough. Yeah, that's what I thought it was, Chris. Woohoo! I'm gonna work it into the show. That's all right. I imagine you're okay with that. Um, but we're gonna work that into the show. Hundred and one pounds in twenty one weeks. Dude, you you know I, I need to I need to get to your meeting because you got to look amazing down a hundred pounds. So proud of you, man. You know, it, yeah, that's just awesome stuff. Um, all right, so let's see here. Got Ruth Ann's checking in. Linda. Um. Linda's got her 10%, got that. Uh, let's see. Scrolling through. Yeah, it's, so Terry's going back to Chesapeake, Virginia's here, very cool. But Terry's going back to my termination of, of calling it a struggle. I mean, it looks the same, or I get that, but, but when you call it a struggle, it's, it's in your head you're feeling defeated. But call it, don't call it that. I, mean, I, I call it balance. You know, I have some good days, I have some bad days. I balance out all of that and I have a great, great time doing it all. So, you know, some people will say it's a struggle. I don't consider it a struggle. I just consider it, a, you know, there are days that I'm better at it than others. So, uh, let's see. Scrolling through. Um,. Hmm. Let's see. Thunder and lightning where May is. Very nice. Um, heh. Donna's checking in from Long Island. Very nice. All right. Scrolling through. Alicia's 20% down. Well, cool. So I'll give you a quick little update on... Um, let's see. Michelle's asked a question first. Hang on. I'm hoping you can give me a little insight. I'm at my last 10 pounds before goal. And 100%, any quick advice you could give? I'm hoping you can give me a little advice. I'm at my last 10 pounds before goal. So you're saying, Michelle, you have 10 pounds left to go to goal? And then, um, I don't understand the 100%, so uh, any quick advice you would give? So, Michelle, I, I say you attack, you attack the last 10 pounds the same way you attack the first 10 pounds. If you go to fatdag.com, uh, if you go to fatdag.com and click on weight loss, you'll see all of my weight entries. My last two weight entries were uh, some of the better weight entries I had. And it was that focus of me wanting to get the goal and tracking everything and being really, really, really good on plan. Uh, and I lost those two pounds. So, Carrie, it was, it was a ring. We ended up getting her a ring for her birthday. So it was not a necklace, but um, but she loved it for sure. Yep, so... Um, Marla's 30 pounds lost, so cool. All right, let's, um, let's get a sound check in. Let's go to, um, let's 
So okay, okay, Michelle. So you meant 100 pounds and 10 pounds to goal. So it's the same advice. You just keep doing what you're doing, really. Um. All right, let's scroll through. You guys, you guys got a lot, a lot, lot, lot to talk about. All right, let's do the sound check as we always do while I'm doing the sound check. Um, we got a couple. I want to get a couple of those written down. There was a couple 10% I saw. There was uh, 30 pounds per down. Chris is 100 pounds down. Tell me what you got going on. That's cool. We'll get it written in the book. So do that. Let's get that part done first. I really like my little journal, but these things get in the way. Um, yep, so let's get that squared away. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, that was a fun one. Huh. Donna, great work. 42 pounds down. Six pounds to Wonderland, says Andrea. Let's go. Let's get this one written down because that's pretty fun. May says, treated the weekend like a weekday. You know, that's one of those things um, where if you can treat the weekends like the weekday and treat every day the same and just stay on your plan, it's going to be awesome. So, ha! Ha! Amy says, greetings from Pittsburgh. You have a big following out here. Thanks a million for all you do. Listening to you has made a difference. Well, cool. Well, thank you for that. Michelle, 90.4 down. Woo! Um, another one, Susan, same thing. Let's get Susan in here. Susan says, weekend away, and you tracked it all. You know, a lot of folks think that, you know, the weekend is a free-for-all, and it's not a free-for-all because, you know, you can undo everything you did all week quickly on a weekend. So, <laughs> Jerry says, I'm in Amish country, and who knew they had more apples than donuts? That is fantastic. Very, very fun. Um... Hey, Lonnie's here. Very cool. So real quick, I'm going to write, um, she didn't put this down, but I'm going to put it in the book anyways because it was fun. So Lonnie joined us for her 5K this weekend, and we did a 5K. So um, she did her first ever sanctioned, qualified, show up, start line, finish line, uh, 5K. So... Lonnie is amazing. She's doing fantastic work. Um, so, but did it, doing a, her first 5K, it was really fun to be able to do it with her. So, very cool. Yeah, so. All right. Got a couple written in there. Let's get the show going, and then we'll hang out after for as long as you guys want. That's kind of the rule. Um, Chris is like, who else is the loser? I like it. And you guys are really chatty. So anyway, so yeah, so we did a 5K on uh, Saturday. So Friday night, there was no show, of course. Saturday, because I was asleep, I wanted to get some rest for Saturday morning. Saturday morning, got up early, did the show, went right into a birthday party for my daughter, and then Sunday went to work. Had to work all day Sunday. Uh, got home Sunday night, and it was just, uh, I was ready for bed. And then so here we are, I slept really good last night. And then tonight's Monday, so worked all day today. So here we are, back to, back to getting this some of this stuff done. So, cool. Mic check one two testing one two three four. Looks good. Audio levels look good. Two three four. 
All right, so that'll look good. All right, so you know what time it is, right? Let's see. It is water time. Water's good. Water is good. You ready? Where's my pen? Episode 118. Here we go. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember... When you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Here we are creeping up to episode 118 of Wise Advice. I want to open the show with a really cool charm. Uh, hanging out on Facebook just before the show, Chris writes in and says, uh, Hey, Mike, I just got a charm today uh, or this or recently. Uh, Chris, down 100 pounds. Chris, congratulations, man. That's an incredible focus. It's incredible determination. And as we talked about previously on this journey, uh, your first couple days when I, when I was your leader for those first two, two or three days as I was a sub, um, they were days that really set this journey on the right path for you because I know that there were some challenges there that we, we probably shouldn't have had. But your perseverance and your dedication, your focus was able to stay strong, stay focused on the prize. And here you are down 100 pounds. There's only a handful of people in the world who can say that they've lost 100 pounds. I'm not even one of them, if you remember correctly. I got down to 91 pound loss and I just couldn't get the last nine because I just I got to the point where I physically didn't have it to lose. So as, as a lot of people get down to that point, uh, that 100-pound mark is a significant milestone. Chris, you're killing it. You're doing fantastic work, and I'm very, very proud of you. And for you and for you only, I'll give a shout-out to your Yankees and say, Go Yankees, because that's for you, man. Because Because I want you to know, Chris, that I support you in everything that you're doing. And if that's the motivation you need to continue doing this and getting to a point where you're healthy then we, you and I at some point will go catch a Red Sox-Yankees game and we'll figure out who the better team is at that point. But for now, you're killing it and getting it done. So, Chris, very, very proud of you. Uh, it's an honor to walk this journey with you. Keep up the amazing work. So, had a couple days off from the show. Uh, apologize to that for you guys. But as you know, I worked this into my life. Ran a 5K over the weekend. Uh, had a great time running with a couple folks on Connect, a couple of Davids. Lonnie was there. Um, CJ was there. A lot of a lot of good folks. Linda was there. We just had a blast. Uh, we went out as for the American Heart Association. They had a 5K race, and uh, some of us ran, some of us walked. We were all out there getting it done. Came in across the finish line at about 26 minutes. I was kind of happy with that in some regard. Disappointed in other regards. Uh, the team, the David David team, really showed me up. They really crossed the line just ahead of me. 
They were strong competitors the entire time. So a rematch is in order there. Went from there to to celebrations galore over the weekend, and then to working all weekend, and uh, and here we are, you know, Monday morning, Monday evening, uh, September eleventh. Um, you know, that's a day that also kind of always, always will live in my heart. It's the day that my world changed and your world changed as well. The whole world changed. Uh, so always want to give a shout to to our to our entire nation. I heard it best today on the news. Uh, as someone was talking about this event, and they said, you know, we may disagree on politics, we may disagree on some policies, but when it comes down to it, Americans always come together as Americans, and September 11th was the greatest day for us to understand that. No matter what's going on as a country, we pull together. As a Weight Watcher community, we're pulling together. We all at this point are focused on the same goals and so when you're focused on the same goals, uh, we are one big team. So September 11th, again, uh, I want to take a, just a quick moment to, to say that we never will forget that, that American tragedy. And for all the folks who, who had a, a part in that and who lost their lives in that, and uh, it's just my hat continues to go off and come off for you. Uh, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your service. And for all the hundreds of thousands of people who, who rallied together as a nation to build us back up, that is what's important. So, so just take a quick moment and, and pause uh, for the for that. All right. So thank you for that. So out of the gate, Denise writes in and says, "Hi, Mike. I emailed you a couple of weeks ago, but uh, about my why." And I discussed my background in endurance sports, running marathons, Ironmans, triathlons, etc. Since I wrote that email, we've had some interesting discussions on the Facebook live feed about using fit points. Particularly is if you're on the extreme side of exercising, such as running, half marathons, triathlons, etc. I would like to expound on those short little discussions. After listening to your take on the matter... I have reflected on it, and I had another one of those aha moments. You see, I may have been an endurance athlete, running marathons, triathlons, and the like, but, but I was also very overweight. At 5'1", and I weighed 200 pounds, I ran one of my marathons. I was 170 pounds when I did my Ironman, so I dug out my old training logs and I looked through them. Luckily, I also kept a diary of my nutrition, Boy, was that scary. I realized that in training, while I thought I was replenishing depleted glyce uh, glycogen stores, I was really overeating and by a lot. And the food was not exactly healthy fuel. I am currently training for the New York City Marathon in November, and this time it is different. I am very mindful of my fuel intake and I'm not allowing myself to go crazy with the sugar. Gummy bears are no longer a part of my nutrition plan. Thanks to your podcast, I now think of food as fuel, and I am focused, keeping mindful of my why. Am I perfect? Heck no, but, but I'm honest with myself. I don't allow myself to make excuses. This morning on my run, I had episode 75 or 76 in the earbuds, and you were talking about how when we go on vacation, we can assume we can eat more because of the amount of walking that we are theoretically going to do. And, and that even though we do burn more points, we're also overeating, so we come out on the wrong side of the scale. Well, I think it's the same way with those of us training for marathons, triathlons, etc. In our minds that we think we are burning thousands of extra calories, and we may even have friends and training partners that back up that theory. But do we really? Does that really give us a free pass to eat with wild abandon? No. Do we need to eat a little bit extra to replenish those glycogen stores? Yes, maybe. Maybe a little protein to build up the muscle that was broken down by exercise. Yes, but I believe that it can be accomplished easily within our weeklies. As I commented on the live feed that night, I eat a few weeklies the day before my long run and a few the day of my long run, but I keep it on the healthy side. I'm trying to make sure that the only sugar I eat is in my fruit, though I usually do eat a couple of whole, 
whole wheat fig bars right before my long run. My daily smart points are 30 and I get 42 weeklies. I will usually eat no more than 40 smart points the day before and the day of my long run. The rest of the days, if I dip into my weeklies, it's by no more than about three. I keep what you said about six smart points being the difference between losing and maintaining front of mind. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this. Thank you again for your service to our country and your support of all of us Weight Watcher peeps. You have no idea what your support means to us, Denise. Well, Denise, uh, you know, luckily, you know, keeping those logs that you kept, it's very interesting as you go back and look back and you see what the difference is between now and, and before. And so before, you know, as you were training and running half marathons, you were able to, to have the endurance side of it where you were able to, to continue to compete and get it done. But you know, running marathons, running half marathons, triathlons, you would think based on the sheer volume of that, just the, the mental description of someone who does that, we make the assumption that that person you know, is, is you know, 0% body fat, completely lean, because that's what our brains think is that if you're running that much, you clearly you're burning off no matter what you throw in it. And as we know, that's not entirely true. You know, you do need to make some healthy choices. I'm not sure gummy bears is on any approved nutrition plan anywhere. You know, you at some point you were enjoying them. I'm glad to see that you wrote them down and I'm glad to see that you've given them up because they are not exactly healthy fuel. You know, there's certainly points. There's certainly to a point where if you wanted to add them in using your points, you could do so. But now you're in the point where you're now understanding that the food choices you make either fuel your dreams or they work against them. And what I want you to do as you train for this New York City Marathon, I want you to say the food choices that I'm going to make from this point on is to the point where I am going to make choices that fuel my dreams. The dream is to get out and run that New York City Marathon. The dream is to get out in there and, and run it, walk it, whatever you want to do. But the dream is to complete it. And you have to make the right choices along the way to fuel that dream. Now, my advice doesn't much change. Whether you, you know, I, I very much am a fan of eating your daily points, figuring out how many of your weekly points you can eat. And then if you are at lifetime, if you are at goal, and you are exercising probably more than the average bear, then at that point you figure out how many of your fit points you can work in. Now keep this in mind. So I, did, I ran a 5K this weekend. I ran a 5K in 26 minutes. For me, that was pretty high intensity. If I were to log that into the app, you know, it tells me that, that at a high intensity, I earned eight fit points for that run. If I'm off a little bit and it's actually medium intensity, it's three fit points. So don't you think that, you know, you cross the finish line of a 5K, you run a 5K in 26 minutes, you know, a lot of us at that point, and I did, as a matter of fact, we went to lunch after, and my lunch was certainly well more than the eight fit points that I may have earned for that run. So we do that, though. We get to the point where we think that, hey, if I'm, as long as I'm working out consistently, I can eat whatever I want and my body will burn it off. Well, that's not entirely true. And so uh, the story that I'll always remember was the story that my doctor gave me way back when, as he looked at me and he said, Mike, you know, and, and he used the number in calories to kind of frame it. He said, Mike, the average person needs about 2,000 calories a day to maintain their weight. He goes, and you're going to the gym, you're burning off 500 calories, and you're eating 4,000 calories, and you think you're making a difference. He goes, so a hard day in the gym burning 500 calories is a lot of work. So if you need 2,000, you're burning off 500, but you're eating 4,000, you're still running a negative deficit, and it will come, keep, uh, catch up to you. So that's where we're at. A couple things we want to use. We want to make sure we use the scale, our clothing size, our feelings as the guide as to where we are in our healthy weight range. All of that combined, combined with our activity level, our intensity level, and then we just follow the plan and we eat healthy, making the choices that we need to make to get it done. Your dailies are there to be used. Your, your weeklies are there to be used. Your fit points are there to be used. 
but it depends on where you are in your journey, what your goals in your journey are. I always like to think that my fit points as I was losing weight were extra credit in my weight loss. Now that I'm at goal, now that I'm maintaining my weight, I work my fit points in, my math that sometimes is a little sloppy, so I'm still balancing that out to figure out where in the fit point range that I can eat them. You know, some weeks I get it right, some weeks I don't get it right. But I but I use them as the guide. But while I was losing weight, I stuck to my dailies and my weeklies using the fit points as extra credit. So, Denise, keep up the great work. I can't wait to hear uh, your success from the New York City Marathon. It's going to be exciting. I think we'll all cheer you, cheer you on as you get it done. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment, and we're very, very proud of you. So Jamie writes in and says, I signed up on the last day of March, and I'm online only. I have lost just under 26 pounds. I really enjoy the program, and I've added a lot more exercise as well, doing my first 5K. I really enjoy your podcast, and I listen every day on one of my walks. Your story really inspires me, and I am very glad that I found you on Connect. I usually eat all of my points every day, but I hardly ever use my fit points or my weeklies. The one problem I'm having, though, is figuring out some of my points for my meat. I always estimate what they would be because I get all of my meat from a farmer. We get chicken, beef, and pork. My question is, should I just estimate by ounce? since I'm pretty sure it's more healthy than what you would get at a store. Also, does anyone else have the same issue? How would you go about counting these points? Thanks again for all you do, and go Royals, says Jamie. Jamie, go Royals. We won't discuss where, but go Royals. Uh, congratulations on signing up. Con nice, nice work being a online only member. That is the, in my opinion, the hardest way to get it done. You clearly are capable of doing it because you're down 26 pounds. Many people as online only members are very, you know, very disciplined, very able to get this done. Uh, I have a lot of admiration for those folks who are able to do that. I want you to change your mindset just a little bit. You said you've lost your exact words. I have lost just under 26 pounds. If you rephrase that and you and you actually celebrate the number where it was, I don't know where your number is, it was 24, 25, 26, and just say, I've lost 25 pounds. I own that. That's what I did. I did that deliberately. I did that with hard work. I did that with focus. Instead of your mindset of saying, I lost just under, you're, you're almost defeated in the fact that you haven't quite gotten there yet. I want you to celebrate every single pound along the way. Every pound that you move the scale in the positive direction, in the direction that you want it to go, every single time that needle moves, it's because you deliberately made the effort to choose what you're eating, to follow the plan, and get it done. So I don't, I don't want to hear the minus point this, point that, only this, just under that. Celebrate the fact that you're getting it done and, and you're really doing a great job. Now, congratulations on adding the exercise. Adding the exercise is a great component to this program because it gets you mentally in the right game. When you start exercising more, you start feeling like an athlete. When you start feeling like an athlete, you start fueling the body like an athlete should. Uh, congratulations on your first 5K. That's the first real milestone, too, in the running world. You know, if you run a 5K, you get out and you start doing a 5K, whether you run or walk, doesn't matter. You're out there getting it done. Again, you're setting a deliberate goal and for your fitness, and that will keep you going. Uh, I would encourage you to start looking at some of your weeklies. I would encourage you to start implementing them in with the healthy food choices that you're already making. When you reach your goal, then at that point, and your exercise it continues to increase, then at that point, as we talked about earlier, look at some of your fit points. But for now, let's focus on eating your dailies. Let's focus on eating your weeklies. The healthy food that you're getting from the farmer, uh, the best way to track it is the same way you track everything else. In, your, in the meat specifically, meat's very easy to weigh. So you weigh the meat. You find out how many ounces it is, you look it up in the app, and you, you say how many, you know, for two ounces of chicken, two ounces of beef, lean. The numbers are there. So you don't have to be a 1,000% perfect 
on brand names and, and what kind of beef it is, you can get close. And what I want you to do is this is where tracking comes in. The more you track, the more accurately that you track, and then you start looking at the results. If you like the results that you're getting on the scale, you continue tracking the way you are. If maybe the numbers aren't creeping up, maybe at that point you kind of readjust and you say maybe it's not as lean as I thought or maybe it's leaner than I thought, but you can do that. But it's just as a matter of just going in the app, typing in search, look, look for chicken, look for beef, look for pork. The numbers are in there and track it by ounces. And I tell you, you know, a lot of us have a hard time measuring uh, or estimating the portion size. You know, uh, you know, an eight ounce filet, you know, if you don't put it on the scale, it's very difficult to eyeball. And if you're off by one or two ounces, that could be two or three points. So I want you to use the scale as you do it, at least until you get to the point where you really understand the serving size, and that will give you much more greater success. Clearly, you know what you're doing. You're down 26 pounds. So, you know, whatever you're doing is working. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, Linda writes in, says, Dear Mike, I've loved episode 76 on eating your weeklies. However, I also listen almost every day to the complacency episode number 72 since that's what derailed me for months. I am proud to say I've got a blue, uh, week of blue dots and I feel a little more in, in control each day. I have kept 36 pounds off, 26 with Weight Watchers, and my why is to be and to feel healthy. I remember how awful I felt at 240 pounds. It was so hard to drag my body around. I went to the zoo with my two sisters and some nieces and nephews. I could only walk short distances, and then I had to rest on a bench. I had sciatica, high blood pressure, prediabetes, edema, I think that's how you pronounce it, edema, edema, and I had suffered two mini strokes a year earlier. I was in denial that it was my weight. Then I saw the picture of me from the day at the zoo. It was my last straw, and I never want to go back. It's my go-to before picture, mainly because I want to avoid the camera. I never want to go back, but keep going, and I finally will reach goal this time. Thank you for all your hard work and your encouragement, uh, Linda from Connect. Linda, congratulations on 36 pounds off. As we always say uh, on this show is 36 pounds does not happen by accident. You didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, my goodness, I'm down 36 pounds. It was deliberate effort. It was deliberate focus. It was a continued effort of not quitting. It was tracking what you're eating. It was maybe making some mistakes, not giving up, continuing on anyways. That's how you lose 36 pounds. 36 pounds is is very, very difficult to do, and you are getting it done. Now let's talk about the photo. The photo is, uh, or the random photo, as I would say, the random photo a lot of times is the game changer, and that is sometimes the motivation we need to get this done. You know, when you think about many of the photos that we take is, you know, if, if we take them, we get to approve them ahead of time. We look at them quickly. We don't like them. When someone else takes them and someone else puts it up there and all of a sudden we see it and we didn't approve it ahead of time or we didn't, you know, get a chance to look at it ahead of time and we really finally see what the rest of the world has been seeing for years and then we see a comparison of the folks around us that sometimes gets our, gets our attention. So that photo, I understand why you're using that as your before photo, and I tell you, when that photo becomes your before photo, combined with your now photo and your after photo, that is uh, photo will become priceless. You will want that photo. You will start digging for more and more and more of those photos because you will get to a point where you say, I am never, ever going back to that point. Now, let's talk about the complacency trap, episode 72, as we talked about all the time. It is complacency trap. We get to the point where we're down 36 pounds and we start feeling good. We start looking good. And so when we look in our mirror, you know, we now start to look like what we've always thought we looked like in the mirror. You know, so we don't see a significant change because in our bathroom mirror, we kind of always thought we looked good. 
And then so now would be a great time to start taking some additional photos, compare them to your before photo, and that will be the fuel to keep you going. Uh, Linda, you absolutely can get this done. If you've lost 36 pounds, then you have now proven that no matter what you have medically, if you eat right and you take care of your body and you get a little bit of exercise, then all of those things you can start having some positive impact in the right direction and when you reach your goal it's going to be interesting to see which of these have completely disappeared keep up the great work i agree with you you're never going back you are going to reach goal and together we'll get it done bethany writes in says hi fat dag i would first like to thank you for all your support i love the podcast it makes this journey a lot easier. I've been a lifetimer for over 15 years now. I'm 42 years old, five foot four, and currently weigh 123 pounds. I am struggling with setting my personal goal weight because I have a specific number on my mind, 119 pounds. I know that I can achieve that goal weight, but not sure how sustainable it will be. Well, with that said, I'm trying to figure out if I should stop now and just switch to maintenance. Would love to hear your input. Thanks, Bethany. Well, first of all, you've been a lifetime member for 15 years. Uh, that's incredible work. Keep up that amazing work. At 42 years old, that means you early on you were very fortunate that early on in your life you figured out that, that eating healthy, living healthy, and being, uh, being healthy was important. That stayed with you for the last 15 years. So your mindset clearly is focused on your health. The difference between your goal weight of 119 to your current weight of 123, you know, it's four pounds. I would be surprised that even on your five foot four frame, that if you could see the difference physically in the four pounds. So you got to get to the point where, where if you want to hit the number at 119, if you want to get there, get there. Uh, but you now need to settle into, do I look okay? Do I feel okay? Is everything I wear look good, fit good? I'm not going to guess that four pounds is going to make that big of a difference in your clothing choices, uh, in your physical activity. But if it's something that your mind is focused on and you need that goal to hit it, then go hit it. You know, And so you can hit it and then determine if, if you want to just sustain it. But, but I, what I want you to do is I want you to get to the point where with whatever you choose, that there is no doubt in your mind. The fact that you're writing in, even asking about it, means if you think that you can get there, you know, let's try. If you get down to 119 and you absolutely hate it, you know, at that point you can, you can have one night and you can quickly get back to 123 if that's what it is. But let's work on focusing on eating healthy, choosing the right things, living a healthy lifestyle. Your body will adjust. Your body will tell you where it needs to be. Uh, what I don't want you to worry about is the sustainability of an exact number. The sustainability is of the eating habits and the healthy lifestyle. That's what I want you to sustain. If you sustain that and you stay right around where you're at, you're going to be just fine. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, being in the game, being focused on your goals for the last 15 years now uh, is, is incredible work. And, and that's a place where I want to be you know, 14 years from now. Is I want to be able to say, yeah, I've been a lifetime member for 15 years. So that is now my goal. Thanks for giving me that. Uh, Patty writes in at a Rancho, Cal Rancho Cordova, Cordova, Cordova. Rancho Cordova, California. She says, hello, dear wingman. I'm excited to report that I've lost 58.2 pounds in nine months so far. I'm extremely pleased because this loss is more than the last time that I joined Weight Watchers. I'm going to keep moving and tracking. This program works for me, and I love it. Thank you for your service and your daily dose of motivation, Patty. Patty, 58.2 pounds in nine months is absolutely fantastic. When's the last time you lost 58.2 pounds? You said this is the best you've ever done on Weight Watchers. Now here where you're, here's where we're at. You're at the point where you've done better than you've ever had on this program. It would be very easy for you at this point to settle in and say, this is good enough. I want you at this point. I want you to pull out your before photos. I want you to compare them to a current photo. 
I want you to write, look at your why if you have it written down. If not, I want you to reassess why you joined in the first place. Figure out if you solved that. At, at 58 pounds down, you know, a current photo looking back to a before photo looks fantastic. I want you to now imagine what you would look like at goal. I want you to imagine what you what you're going to feel like at goal. And I want you to compare all of that to now and figure out is what do I have left to do? How much more of this journey do I want to push forward for? And will I get to the point where I step on the scale and I say I do not want to lose another pound? That's the point where you celebrate. That's the point where you call it goal. 58.2 pounds is proof that you can get there because you don't lose that on accident. Everything you've done to this point is, is leading you down to that success. And because of that, I am 100% confident that you can do it. And so when you do, I want to celebrate. Just like Linda did. Linda wrote in on Facebook before the show, said, I'm down 10%. That's worth celebrating. If you hit 10%, you can hit goal. And when you hit goal, we celebrate. We let the world know just how amazing it is. We share it on the air. I want you to go to fatdag.com. Click on Listen Now. Email in at onair at fatdag.com. Send in your comments, your questions. I will work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. Again, I want to take a moment to say, you know, uh, on this day as I record this on September 11th, uh, that day will forever live in my mind, in my memory. I will never forget exactly what I was doing that day and the response that we did subsequently. Uh, being in the military now for 26 years, uh, I was very much involved in all of that process that was going on. Uh, it's a long, complicated story, but but I know exactly the response that we provided and, uh, and, you know, as folks responded as a nation, um, at a moment's notice, this nation rallied together to do something truly remarkable. And so, again, I want to shout out to, to anyone, uh, to all Americans at this point, to say thank you for your commitment to our nation. Uh, and then, you know, parallel that, you know, certainly it, it pales in comparison, but par parallel that to what we're doing in this community. As we rally together, as we support each other, everything is possible. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Whoop, whoop. Working late for you. Thanks for all you do over on Instagram. Very, very cool. Um, Jan, sorry you got a little late. You had an association meeting. Woohoo. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Denise, thank you. Yeah, you are maybe a little biased, right? Uh, that's fun. Let's see what else we got. Um... Lay's chips are vegan. Whew. I'm not sure they're good for us, though, right? Um, all right, so let's see. Scrolling back to the bottom here. Diane, thank you. Danielle, good night. Thank you. Uh, Lee, thank you very much. Always good to have your input. Uh, Angie, thank you very much for that. Uh, Twitter's going crazy. Let's see. When Linda's got the whoop, whoop. Yep, whoop, whoop. Uh, let's see. So, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, didn't give obviously didn't give a shout out to the um, to the folks in Florida, the hurricane folks, and then Texas still. But uh, man, the wildfires still going. It's a crazy, crazy time, you know. Um, but you, I don't know if you guys, you know, not getting political, but you know, the only I watched the Fox News channel and Neil Cavuto was talking about today, and he said that. Uh, what I thought was interesting of how he worded it was, 
and I tried to kind of paraphrase him a little bit tonight, is it doesn't matter on September 11th, right? It didn't matter, you know, if the, your rescue, the person who came to your rescue, you didn't ask what race they were, you didn't ask what religion they were, you didn't ask, you didn't look and see what color they were, you just realized they were responding to you in a time of need. And so that's one thing I've always loved about our community here, is that we don't care about that type of stuff. We don't care about race, we don't care about gender, you know, we just care about goals and focus and determination. So in this community, um, the beauty of what we got going on is that we're so focused on helping each other that none of that other stuff matters. And and so in the, in our time of need, and again, I'm not exactly comparing it because there's no comparison, but in our time of need, you know, we come to each other and say, how can I help you? And then and if someone offers help, you know, we don't stop and say, hang on, wait a minute. Uh, oh, you're from California? Well, I don't, yeah, I'm not really sure. I can accept your, you know, uh, you guys out in California are a little weird. So, uh, you know, I don't want to go there. So. Uh, so at least just summed it up perfectly. We all have the same human struggle of overeating. So it's a very, very, very cool. So, so that's one of the things that, you know, we lose sight of that type of stuff. Right. And, and as I, um, every time I go to a connect meetup, that's one of my favorite things about meeting other people who are doing this journey is that it, it is just so fun to, to see and meet people that you probably wouldn't necessarily associate, not associate, wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily hang out with in your, in your social circle um, because the meeting rooms are just so diverse and usually we get locked into our own social circles. It's not that we're not willing to, we just don't have the opportunities to. Uh, but every time I go to a meetup and meet all these new people, it's just so fun to just hang out with so many different people who all have the same mentality. And that is helping each other, getting it done, so... Yeah, so Denise, you're right. Crazy California people, you know. I, I know a, I know a handful of crazy California people now, and they're it's growing by the day. Crazy California people. So, um, yeah. So Sharon Shannon says that we're on the same playing field. No matter what we do for a living, how much we make, what do we do, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? Can you imagine, Chris? Right? Can you imagine? Right? Chris, so here's Chris. Chris downs 100 pounds. Can you imagine Chris walks into the Weight Watchers meeting room and he goes, you know what, uh, I really hate Red Sox fans, so I'm going to go ahead and turn around and leave. You know, and then so Chris, you wouldn't be down 100 pounds today. So, and I even gave you a shout out. That hurt me tonight to, to give a shout out to the Yankees. And it did. So, um, but Chris, when you get to goal, man, how fun would it be if we just randomly went to a Red Sox Yankees game somewhere somehow? I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, we'll have to find someone to sponsor us to take us there or something, but. But how fun would that be? Uh, I have some connections up there. We'll find someone to get us some tickets. So you make goal, I'll find the tickets. So cool. All right, well, let's get this show wrapped up. Let's go, let's get a couple more things written in the handy dandy journal. Uh, tell me what's going on cool in your world. We'll write it down. I'll put 118 out to the world. So the, the other 8,000 people, um, who listen to this on the podcast are finally going to get caught up because they've, they've been dying without a show for a couple, two or three days. So it's very fun. So what else is going on in there? Yep. Linda, wish you all good night. Um, yeah, the, Lee is apparently a Jerry Springer fan. I love it. Oh no! Wait now, Shannon. Now you're going too far, Shannon. So now you're you're talking about the Saints, the Patriots. Even though they didn't they w did not win their season opener, the, you know I draw the line there. You know we're a Patriots fan uh, for sure. Chris, you're allowed in Fenway as long as uh, we're playing, and you have to leave if it looks like we're not going to win. That's just how that works. Um, oh, look at this. Let's get this written down. Um, I made Liz says I made my last order from a plus size store. Hmm. <laughs> I now wear the small size. That's so awesome. 
uh, and you're done shopping there. That's pretty pretty exciting. Um, that's one of the things that uh, I hear a lot in person. I hear from folks who you know when they when they can now when they transition to um, I don't know what the word is, but uh, they can just walk into most stores and pick things off the rack. When you can transition to that and not have to shop at a plus size store, uh, those are really really fun days for them. So that's very exciting. So congratulations, Liz, on that. Very cool. Um, Robin says you joined a weight loss challenge and people were complaining that they have to log their food and you're like yeah I do that uh, and that's what works very nice Jeff keep on good, fighting the good fight to you as well Joanne I disagree actually on that one Joanne says Fenway is a great place to see a ball game I disagree unless you are fortunate enough to sit in the first five or six rows uh, after that, it's it's a difficult place to catch a game. Uh, it's a very historic place. It's a very the energy there is very cool. Um, but man, you know, so this it's an old stadium, so there there are better stadiums. There are not better environments. So all perspective, though, right? Um, Chris, that's awesome. Chris got cleaned out his closet. Get rid of your bigger clothes. Very very cool. That's a that's a great. Um, it's a great strategy. I tell you guys to do that because it because it makes you feel like a different person too. Not only do you look better, you feel better, but you're mentally you go, hey, I'm a different person because I'm wearing different clothes. So, man, Chris, I'm very, very happy for you. Um, yeah, Wrigley Field. Yeah, that's not too far away. Denise made your husband get rid of his 42s and double X's. Yep, very fun. Um... Lee's taking four bags of clothes to good to the thrift store. Um, April. So April made uh, your first goal of 15 pounds in in part two of your journey. You lost 250 pounds in maintaining it for nine years. Now need to lose the last 88 with 73 to go. That is awesome. So. So, so April, re, re, reword that because of what I'm reading. Did so, April, have you lost 250 pounds currently, and you've maintained that for nine years, and now you're losing, trying to lose an 88 more? Is that what? Is that what I'm reading? So, just clarify that for me, because that sounds pretty remarkable. Um, Denise, great job there. Denise getting her husband on board. Um. Uh, Charlene says, felt so good to run for your birthday celebration, 10 miles, and then you led your meeting tonight. Isn't that fun? We just go out and run a 10-mile run just because. Let's do that. Charlene uh, ran 10 miles as a birthday celebration. Hmm. Happy birthday. Charlene, is it today? Um, if it's your birthday today, Charlene, then we sing happy birthday. Um, yeah, home is a great place to see a ball game. Um... Yeah, cleaning out the closet's good. Terry's good night, good night, good night. Be the prize. That's my favorite one, right? Show no one wants to no one wants to see this journey. No one wants to follow you if it's miserable. So if you be the prize and show them how fun it is, they want to join you and they do join you. So uh Instagram folks, we're down to a minute and twelve, so we're gonna cut out in a minute and ten seconds. So those of you who are on Instagram, thank you for being here. We're going to wrap up Facebook not too long from now, so don't necessarily run over to Facebook if you don't want to, but we're going to wrap that up. But thank you for being here on Instagram. Have a great night. Continue to stay focused, stay disciplined. You have the ability to get this done. I believe in you. I know you can get it done. So um, I like Liz on Facebook says, you're, not, you're following the advice of getting rid of anything that makes you feel fat or triggers the memories of the old you. Yep. I get it. That's why I said do it. Suzanne, uh, Susan, very nice. Um, so thank you for being here. 
And so you know, obviously, you have the app, I hope. You know how to tune into the app to the actual podcast. There's now 118 other episodes or 117 other episodes to go and listen to. So, um, All right, so hey, everybody, on count of three, we're going to sing happy birthday to Charlene. You guys ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Charlene. Happy birthday to you. Very cool. Whoop, whoop. And go run 10 miles. Uh, Robin's got Benadryl kicking in. So April, very cool. So April started at 487 pounds, lost 250 pounds with 88 to go. What an incredible journey. April, if you are on Connect and uh, and you want to share or shoot me an email, I'd love to follow you on Connect and check in there. I I, I may have missed it, um, but either put in your Connect name, which if you don't want to, that's fine, or shoot me an email, mike at fatdag.com, and send me your Connect name. I would love to check in uh, a little more on that. Very, very cool. Um... Ellen has a new granddaughter tonight. Congratulations to that. There's no song for that one. I don't know. Happy granddaughter. To, that's a happy birthday too, right? Um, uh, so Chris is going to go see Jeter's induction. So Chris, how cool would it be if you go see Derek Jeter's induction and you have to buy a medium jersey and it fits and you can wear it for life, right? If you're going to get one for life, you might as well get one that it fits. Um, league, that's awesome. Yeah, your mom was expired by your success and she joined. She get she hit goal a month before you did. That's very fun. Um, very fun. Um very cool. Look at all this good stuff, all kinds of good stuff. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm gonna kind of scroll through, skimming through to get to the bottom. Um, and it looks like we made it. So cool. Let me get the show published. Uh, I will plan on being here tomorrow night. That's the plan as of now. My plan really is all this week. Um, setting myself up so that every night this week we'll do this. So that is the plan. Um, as you know, it's just a plan. So we'll see how, how good I do. Tuesday nights is always my hardest night. So we'll see how I do tomorrow night. But outside of that, um, got a busy weekend scheduled, got a busy, actually, um, I got a busy month and a half scheduled. Just about every weekend I got something significant going. So um, we'll see how well we do uh, with all this. But the plan is to be here every night this week, so um, so we'll see. Yeah, you're right, Chris. I forgot you're 6'2". So, what, but you know, the point is the same, right, Chris? Whatever, whatever jersey you get, you want it to fit great. Uh, and you want it to uh, want it to look good, and you want to buy the smallest one possible. So, and Denise, I completely agree. Hope is not a plan. That's why I said I hope to, and now I'll make the effort to make it happen. So, um, you know, so if if I'm not going to rely on hope, but uh, I'm just throwing it out there. So, good night to all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, truly, my honor to walk this journey with you. Uh, and it's you know it's important that as we do this that we stay focused, you know, and there's an email that I'm going to try and get into one of the shows coming up about focus because, um, you know, this takes laser focus, really. You've got to really say more than anything you want to get this done. And by you being here at 10 o'clock at night, Eastern time, 11 o'clock now, um, on a Monday night tells me you're focused. And as long as you're focused, I want to be here to help continue to channel that energy and get you to goal. So you all can do it. Uh, I'm positive of that. Uh, without a doubt, if this is what you want to do and you stay focused, you can get it done. So go sleep on that. Get it done. We will see you tomorrow night. Have a good night. I wish you good focus.